Hello friends and welcome back to the channel where we delve into the mind of a villain. In this century we'll be taking a look at the widely despised Dolores Umbridge from the Harry Potter books and movie franchise. The Harry Potter series written by J.K. Rowling gave us no shortage of villains to dislike. Of course the entire premise of the franchise is the epic battle between good and evil. Rowling pits the orphaned but good-hearted Harry Potter against the also orphaned yet murderous Lord Voldemort. However, for most fans, even Lord Voldemort in all his evil glory isn't as universally despised as the revolting character that is Dolores Umbridge. Even her name tells us that she is a vile woman who will cause pain. As explained by Rowling, Dolores means sorrow, while Umbridge, a play on Umbridge, means to take offense. Dolores Umbridge first appears in the fifth book, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and is described as a short squat woman who looks like a toad. She speaks in a high-pitched breathless voice and is fond of kittens and all things pink. Dolores immediately begins causing trouble for the book's established heroes. She arrives at Hogwarts and hypocritically demands respect as a Ministry of Magic official, while denying the same respect to Dumbledore, the headmaster. In her classroom lessons, she commits one of the most insulting things a teacher can do to a student, speaking to them in a condescending manner, using a passive-aggressive tone to keep them in submission. Not unlike the annoying college lecturers in real life who treat their students as if they were in kindergarten. She does not care about the welfare of her students, deciding not to teach them how to actually defend themselves practically, but simply pacifies them with theoretical knowledge to pass their exams. Dolores was appointed as High Inquisitor by the Ministry and the latest Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher but she's actually there to spy for the Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge. The Minister is paranoid that Dumbledore is using Hogwarts students to overthrow him. Dolores is completely on board with the Ministry's unjustified fear and hatred of both Dumbledore and Harry because her support of the insecure Fudge will allow her to crawl her way to increase power. Eventually, her scheme pays off. She becomes the headmistress of Hogwarts and rules the school in true dictatorial fashion. What we learn about Dolores during the time in our hero's lives is that she has two sides. The way she dresses, her choices in office decor, and her mannerisms all point to her being a very feminine, innocent, almost childlike personality. However, this is in sharp contrast with her actual behavior which reveals to us that she is cruel, manipulative, and extremely prejudiced. All that pink lace and frills is a cover for the sociopathic qualities Dolores freely exercises against those she deems unworthy. Now her list of abusive acts are quite extensive, and it would be beyond the scope of this video to cover them all. But it would be quite accurate to summarize Dolores as a bully and a sadist it's clear that she enjoys watching others suffer, especially when it is her doing. She attempts to belittle Snape when she rubs in the fact that his first application to teach defense against the dark arts was unsuccessful. And as she is about to dismiss a devastated Professor Trelawney from the school grounds, she appears to be pleased by it. As for her sadism, one of the best examples would be her barbaric methods of disciplining her students. As her students squirm in pain from their cursed quills, she heaves a sigh of satisfaction as she watches with a disturbing smirk. Although Dolores is obviously portrayed as an awful person, she does have traits that would be considered positive. She holds strong values such as loyalty, ambition, and a desire for the success of wizard kind. However, her unhealthy exaggeration of these traits leads her far outside the bounds of the laws she professes to uphold. It's apparent that Dolores seems to desire perfection both from herself in her career and those around her, even when dealing with children. 
In fact, we might say that Dolores does not like disorder and hates children precisely because she cannot control them. Dolores is almost obsessive about perfection and notices even small details that point towards her environment falling into chaos. The long list of ridiculous rules that she establishes are a testament to her need for obsessive control. To justify that control and to assert her dominance, Dolores hides behind the authority of the Ministry of Magic. She declares that to question her practices is to question the ministry, and by extension, the minister himself. Dolores appears to have some form of unconventional admiration or affection for the minister. It would seem that other than her cats, she has no other object of affection than the minister, who she keeps a photograph of on her desk. Perhaps she looks to him as somewhat of a parental figure. For Dolores, one source of motivation for her horrific behavior that we can deduce from the books and movies is that she believes pure-blooded wizards are the superior race, and every other being that occupies the magical world is inferior. This allows her to justify her actions towards those beneath her. They simply aren't pure-blooded enough to matter. She is also someone who craves power and found her opening towards achieving her ambitions in the Ministry of Magic. She intends to claw her way as high as she can possibly go. We meet Dolores at a time when the majority of people do not want to believe Harry's experience of the return of Voldemort and in an effort to maintain their comfort levels, they are all too happy to hate both Harry and the man who openly backs him, Dumbledore. The Minister for Magic himself is terrified of what it would mean if Voldemort was truly back. Dolores knows that playing on those fears will gain her the Minister's trust and allow her proximity to the highest position in the wizarding world. Another reason Dolores behaves in the way she does is that she truly seems to believe that she's a pillar of morality. Early on, we learn Dolores's favorite words, I will have order. She even yells this as she is being dragged away by the centaurs at the end of the Order of the Phoenix. She claims to have the utmost respect for law and order even though she often breaks the law in the name of maintaining her version of order. Dolores is generally calmed and controlled under pressure, but we do see her explode in a few emotional situations. Based on the behavior and personality traits that we've seen, Dolores can be suggested to be a sociopath or suffering from antisocial personality disorder. Without going deep into psychology, a quick internet search would reveal some signs of a sociopath. Firstly, the failure to obey laws and norms which would result in a criminal arrest. At the end of the Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix novel, Dolores admits that she conspired with Dementors to trick Harry Potter into using magic outside of school in an attempt to get him expelled. This was an illegal action that she withheld from the Minister of Magic because she knew it would get her in trouble. Under normal circumstances, if Harry had revealed that Dolores forced him to use a cursed torturing quill, which carved words into his hand, she would have been immediately removed from her teaching position and possibly been thrown into Azkaban for magical torture. Sometime later, Dolores is willing to use the Cruciatus curse on Harry Potter, even though she knows full well that it is illegal. Secondly, lying, manipulation, and deception for self-amusement or profit. Dolores lies to cover up her true heritage so that she can advance further in the Ministry of Magic. She is manipulative in that she uses the people around her to help her achieve her goals. In Book 7, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, she claims that the locket or horcrux that she wore around her neck was a family heirloom, when we are clearly told that she took it from Mundungus Fletcher after busting him for illegal sales. We see her lie for self-amusement when she insists that Mary Cattermole could not have gotten a wand in any other way than through theft. She knows full well that children who are muggle-born or half-blood 
can be witches or wizards and have wands. But she's in her element of power, and it amuses her to see the victims of her witch hunt squirm. Thirdly, irritability or aggression. Dolores is prone to fits of rage when she feels she is not being given her due. When Harry talks back to her in class for the very first time, she is so enraged she can barely contain herself. As we know, she gives him detention, which ends in his I must not tell lies scar. Finally, Dolores shows a complete lack of remorse for her actions. Out of all the vile acts that she commits during the series, we never see her once feel sorry for those she harms or repentant for her behavior. At the end of Order of the Phoenix, Dolores is dragged off by the centaurs in the Forbidden Forest. She is eventually rescued by Dumbledore, but instead of being humbled by that experience, where she almost lost her life because of her actions, she acts as if it never happened. Even after she loses her position of power at Hogwarts, she simply waltzes back into the Ministry of Magic and resumes her normal duties without any acknowledgement of how wrong she was. Based on what we've seen, it's not a far stretch to say that Dolores Umbridge would likely be diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. However, without knowing much of Umbridge's childhood history, we still have difficulty understanding the logic behind this woman's malevolence. The books and their movie counterparts do little to satisfy our curiosity as to why this woman is such a horrible witch. Contrary to the detailed backstory of the main villain, Voldemort, J.K. Rowling provides no childhood history, no traumatic occurrences, not a hint of justification that will allow us to give us a peek behind the curtains, at least not in the originally published works. Fortunately, for those of us who need more insight, Rowling published Umbridge's Backstory on the Wizarding World website in 2015. Ultimately, Dolores is a victim of her past, which led her down the path of her sociopathic tendencies. We learn that Dolores Jane Umbridge was born to a wizard father, Orford Umbridge, and a muggle mother, Ellen Cracknell. Dolores was the firstborn. She also had a brother who was a squib. Her parents were unhappily married, and she resented both of them. Her father was a janitor at the Ministry of Magic and had no ambition to be promoted, and her mother was a muggle who Rowling describes as fighty and untidy. Sadly, both Dolores and her father blamed Ellen for the lack of magic displayed by her son. When Dolores was 15, this animosity resulted in Ellen and her son leaving the family to disappear back into the muggle world. After this, Dolores never spoke of either of them again and pretended to be 100% pure blood. At school, she struggled with her peers and was never given any positions of power such as head girl or prefect, even though she thought she deserved to be noticed. Rowling then tells us that even at 17, Umbridge was judgmental, prejudiced, and sadistic. After joining the Ministry of Magic, she took credit for other people's work until she was eventually promoted to the head of the Improper Use of Magic office. She denied that her father had been a janitor at the Ministry and insisted that he was a distinguished member of the Wizengamot. It's not surprising to read that bad things happened to those who questioned her stories. Her animosity toward muggles only grew during her time at the Ministry because Rowling tells us that when Dolores offered up her thoughts on the non-magical community, even the most anti-muggle person was surprised at the depth of her hatred. When she finally came to power at Hogwarts, she at long last had the authority to utilize her cruelty and prejudices against those who had not given her her due. Through Rowling's follow-up story, we can see that our deduced motivations hold true. Umbridge was an angry and resentful child and teen who was unable to hold any empathy for even her mother or brother. She disliked her father and others who held power over her at school, which as an adult translated into a desire to be the one in control. 
Her prejudiced attitude towards non-magical folks began as a young child, stoked by her father's disgust at having a squib child. We can also see the cognitive dissonance in this family. Orford is upset he has a squib son, yet he only gets as far as being a janitor at the ministry. Perhaps Dolores inherited her lack of self-awareness from him. Ultimately, what we can learn from this character is that cruelty, lack of empathy, and deceitful behavior should not be rewarded, even in dark times. Dolores also serves as a great reminder that we should be mindful of how we are treating others who we might mistakenly judge as different or less than us. Although she is nowhere near as evil as Voldemort, she is somewhat more despicable and scarier due to how realistic she is. While none of us may have to face a force of evil like Voldemort, there could very well be a person like Umbridge lurking in your school or place of work. And that, my friends, is no comforting thought. So what do you think of Dolores Umbridge, folks? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching till the end.